you know our website, speaksoflife.org, which is where we put in all the details and the Facebook page of events coming up. So we meet every second Friday. Once a month, we have prophetic appointments where it's prophecy and dream interpretation. You can actually log on to our website and book slots for that. And the waiting list, and Tim's much better than me at this, but the waiting list is on average seven or eight months um, for a prophetic appointment. So if you do make an appointment, do put it in your diary, you'll get a reminder. If you know someone who doesn't know Jesus yet, we have spiritually seeking appointments or someone that has recently become uh, a Christian in the last 12 months, we have spiritually seeking appointments and the waiting list for that is considerably less. Um, in fact, it's on a month to month rolling basis. So do encourage your friends to sign up for that. Um, these appointments are not an excuse to shortcut the seven month waiting list. We will find you out. All right. <laughs> so, um, so please don't do that. Um, if you want to get a, I think Holly mails twice a month or once a month, something like that, just in terms of a report, what happened last month, and um, just a reminder about the link for this for each month's meeting. So you probably get two emails. Do sign up on the uh, mailing list, and that is on the website as well under the banner contact. How's that? Was that a good advert? All right. Um, people have written various books. Jean and Lauren, I actually haven't got your... Uh, Jean, have you got your book? Copy your book. He's going to get one now. All right. We're going to do this because because Holly said, and she's right, we're really not very good at this, are we? You know, there are many, many amazing people on this call and they've written amazing books. Now, can we spotlight Jean so we can so we can see his, 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 his book? Okay. Is, is he spotlighted yet? Let's have a look. Yeah, yes. Good job. Yes. Nice full picture. Lane to follow Jesus. Amazing book. All right. And available on Amazon, Gene. Is that right? Yeah. Good, good. Do you want to give a quick pitch about what? who's it for? What's it about? Well, sure. Thank you. Um, the The idea here is it's uh, 27 short chapters on all the basics of Christianity, including all the gifts of the spirit stuff that we that often gets left out of discipleship, but that we try to practice quite a bit in the charismatic world. Um, it's great for new believers. It's also great for people who have been believers for a while and maybe uh, were never fully discipled or weren't discipled well. And so uh, we like it. Everyone else seems to like it. So get get a copy. Give it to your friends. Good job. Excellent pitch. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gene. I bet I guess if Tim spotlights me or whoever's doing spotlighting, um, I, I guess I've got to do this because I, I really feel very awkward doing this kind of stuff, but I've got to get over it. All right. <laughs> okay, I really have got to get over it. <laughs> okay. I, book, I wrote a book on uh, dream interpretation. The central uh, aspect of that is the divine love story. All right. Intimacy with Jesus from which all the gifts flow. All right. So it's a love story, but actually using that to interpret dreams. And then if you can't be bothered to read 20 odd books on prophecy, I, I summarize them in one book. All right. So there's like 22 books in one, which I wrote a few years ago. Um, it's like a how to guide, you know, it, like you get these, you know, um, windows for dummies and all that kind of stuff. It's like kind of, you know, how to prophesy, steward prophetic words, things like that. So anyway, they're on Amazon. You can get them from the website. OK, there we go. Was that was that good enough, Holly? Did we do quite well there? <laughs> Good job. Good job, Mark. Good job. <laughs> um, and and actually, um, I, this just came to me as a dream that Laura Beth, uh, I, haven't, I don't know if Laura Beth's ever written a book, but she should write one because I'd buy it. So um, so Laura Beth, so there you go. Um, I just saw a book coming out of you. So as we're talking, so, so yeah, um, we'd all buy one. We'd all put our pre-orders in now. So there you go. <laughs> um great great now is is that um have we done all that we've done all the housekeeping so holly do you want to just jump in with your bit and then we'll um yeah just to say we've had a couple of people contact speakers of life saying can you contact can you connect me um with people in my area um either have moved to an area and, and are looking for a church and obviously we have some church contacts and Mark travels around all over the place and knows everybody all over the world. But actually we feel like this is a really good place to connect with people in your area, which is one of the reasons why we encourage you to rename yourself on here with the name of the place 
where you're from. If you just put um, Holly from the USA, it makes it a bit difficult for people. If you make it a little bit more specific than that, then it means that other people can spot where you're from and you can just privately message each other and go, do you want to connect? Um, and if you, and then you're kind of connecting with like-minded people, soul family, that um, you at least have a clue, have a similar kind of um, DNA. So yeah, we're just encouraging you to connect where we are. And I know certainly some of the guys in Scandinavia did that and they've been meeting up and, and connecting and encouraging each other in a prophetic lifestyle. And that's something that a lot of us don't get in our local churches. So we're just encouraging you to kind of take responsibility and do that yourselves. That's all. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. And it does mean the fact that actually whenever you go in the world, actually you do find a, like a soul family and uh, you meet up with them and it's great. It's, it's amazing. And, you know, um, and um, we all carry words from our own land, other lands, uh, and so that's uh, a useful um, aspect as well. The fact that actually when you're walking land, it's good to actually meet up with people who are from the land. So actually what you perceive can be fed into their prayer networks and everything else. So that'd be great. Jenny, why don't you just, um, I'll, I'll, I'll meet yourself and just just pray, just um, so that, um, just release healing in, you know, and then people can give testimonies as the evening goes on. Does that sound, does that sound good? Why don't you pray for it? Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for this, for this, this time. Lord, just invite your presence. We thank you, God, that you are Jehovah Rapha. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that um, your, pre your, your power just come upon this meeting, Lord God. Lord, and that you can heal anytime, all times, and that we we're not we don't set conditions, Lord God, on how you will come. But God, we just invite your presence to crash in tonight, and that each person, Lord God, would have an encounter with you uh, in a deeper intimacy that they will grow more in. And we just declare it and we give thanks, Lord God, for the healings that will take place mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jenny. And good to see you. Yeah. There's the Jewish year and then there's a Gregorian year, which is we're in 2023 going to 2024. The Jewish year is 5784 that that we entered that in Rosh Hashanah, which was towards the end of September. Now, um, you know, with seasons and everything else, we don't go over the top and then actually become slavish to those seasons. But at the same time, it would be foolish to ignore the fact that actually there are seasons within the Bible and there are seasons within various calendars. And actually God is actually saying something through these seasons. There have been a lot of great things on the year that uh, 5784 that have been out on various broadcasts from various um, uh, prophets all over the world. So again, you bring your piece and, it, and, and actually it fits, it should fit to that overall picture. So um, why is 5784? Why are people talking about it? Uh, many people talk about it. it's the season of uh, the open door. It's because um, the we've gone from 5783 to 5784 and the, the change from the number three to the number four so in the Jewish um, number scheme, you've got actually um, uh, there's a, a Hebrew name for the for the for the number, but also there's a prophetic picture as well. And so we've gone from the three, which is a gimel, which is to do with the camels are coming, you know, um, uh, provision, etc., into number four, which is dalet, d a d a l e t. And the word is derivative of um, a, a root meaning uh, door or gateway or portal. It can mean bowed over and, and kind of poor, poor in spirit. But actually, um, in this context, we're just going to focus on the fact that it means door, gateway, portal. Which is a clue. All right. And that's why people are talking about the season of the open door. And actually, it's a season of doors. So there are closing of doors to go through the open doors as well. We're actually in the decade of the 80s in the Jewish calendar, so 83 to 84. And why is that important is because 80s in that calendar comes from a, a root word pay or pi, which is P-E-Y, which is the uh, which is the kind of related to the mouth declaring word of God. All right. So we're into the decade of using our mouths. All right. And we know that's very important, particularly in, as prophets. It's really important what you say. All right. 
because actually you're speaking into the atmosphere, you're an atmosphere changer. And actually, you know, using those words that God gives us that they do not return void. So that, and, and actually we're commanded to benedict or speak well over the land that we walk and things like that. So it's very important what comes out of our mouth in this decade of the 80s, but particularly as we go through this season of open doors. So here we go. I know people like um, points uh, one to seven. So here you go. I've done that just for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, number one. Right, what are we going to look at the, in uh, you know um in this season of open doors? Well, number one, first make sure that the door that you're going through is a Jesus door. All right, it seems pretty obvious, but actually, and I'll come back to this at the end, that we actually um know the the you know the voice of Jesus, and actually there are many things that you could do, all right and many opportunities that you could do, but please make sure it's a Jesus door, all right? Don't make it a good idea, make it a good idea, all right? Make decisions out of that place of intimacy with Jesus, all right? That's usually a good place to start because you recognize his voice, all right? Because, um, you know, he is, as it were, the Dalit of all Dalits, the door of all doors, because we know in John 10, verse 9 and 10 Jesus says I am the door so that's a bit of a giveaway isn't it you know I am the door <laughs> um and you know if anyone enters by me he'll be saved and go and find out pasture you know etc so actually by going through um Jesus he will, it will always be a safe place and that's the thing with heavenly encounters and all this kind of stuff you know which we've done previously is the fact that he's always with the hand of Jesus always 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 because that guarantees you of being in a safe place finding a safe place finding safe pasture but also extending us as well so it's going out to a a wide spacious place right so number two what will prevent you from um uh, going uh, through these doors right now um in 1 corinthians 16 verse 9 we read a great effect, a great door for effective work has opened for me, and there are many who oppose me. And we also know the fact that actually, as um, from experience, the fact that there's always a lot of opposition when we're actually at the point of breakthrough. Because actually, if we're nowhere near breakthrough, the enemy kind of tends not to bother with us too much. And so actually, when I sense fear and intimidation, I get very excited. Uh, I said this on the broadcast, Judith will tell you that I really, really do get excited when I sense fear and intimidation in the place because I'm thinking, yep, I'm so close to my breakthrough. The enemy is now interested in deterring me from going to that place. So um, we know that the antidote to um, fear is love. Perfect love drives out fear. And actually, intimidation has to do with giants in the land. All right. So go and read how Israel got rid of the giants in the land. All right. But also read, you know, obviously David and Goliath. All right. That, you know, we learn, you know, how to get rid of giants and actually not to be intimidated by giants, not to focus on the giant, focus on the God who will actually dispel those giants because what we focus on we empower in our lives so if you're focusing on the giants then you empower the influence of those giants in your life all right number three all right so i'm gonna i'm going through these quite quickly um uh, i i actually wrote here um don't curate the previous season or other people's baggage what do i mean by that well actually um there's been a few in the British Irish Council broadcast, actually, is the fact that there's um, there's various aspects of, you know, we're not meant to go through these doorways. And sometimes they I think it was I don't know who it was last um, last week, but it was talking about uh, Rob Cates was talking about actually some of these doors are going to be really quite tight. All right. Going to be quite tight. And actually, I think Christine Larkin was saying that actually um, with these um with these tight doorways that means that we're not actually going to take much with us and some of those can be um opinions our own opinions they're nothing to do with god they're just our opinions all right clearly we've never been guilty of that have we we have these strong opinions which have no root <laughs> in the bible or god it's just a bee in our bonnet and we tell everybody who happens to be there around us what our opinions are well god doesn't want it to take us those stinking opinions through those doors 
through the door into the wide spacious places that is given us in this season all right and and actually deliberately some of those doors are going to be quite narrow for you and you're going to feel the squeeze and you think oh this is bad no no it just means the fact you've actually got all these things that you're carrying with you you know and actually sometimes we carry other people's um as it were um spiritual belongings other people's ideas other people's beliefs and actually people will say well I, if you're going to do that i would do this and if you accept that and it's and it doesn't fit it's walking around in the wrong armor and you're walking through a door with someone else's perception they've almost self-projected what they think you should be doing in the new season it isn't what god wants so do not curate that baggage in other words don't become a museum of other people's belongings um things that don't belong in this season all right because they might have been used from the previous season but do not be bring them as a museum piece a sentimental memento into the new season because it will remind you of what you were doing before and we're part of a movement not a monument all right hallelujah preaching to myself here <laughs> shabba, shabba. <laughs> number four all right it's important to make the right sound as we approach the door go through the door and in into the land that god's given us right what do i mean by that well i'm just going to find the the reference now because i've got so excited i've got so excited friends that i've put my pieces of paper all over the place all right so <laughs> so, so so you'll have to you'll have to bear with me for a minute all righty so so actually um um, there was a, a scripture about about making the right. Actually, why what have I what have I done? Here we go. Here we go. There we go. There we go. So excited! Hallelujah! <laughs> ha. It's great actually when you're giving these things, you're actually preaching to yourself, and you're kind of getting drunk on the Holy Spirit because actually you're thinking, you know, the Spirit saying, "Mark, this is great. You should listen to this. <laughs> It'll transform your life." <laughs> <laughs> ha ah, and how many of us know that actually we're being transformed and actually that we're doing this now and when you're in the middle of a process what it does do is it encourages you to do the thing that you're doing and you can kind of get drunk with the holy spirit about actually just isn't it great to obey the holy spirit isn't it just a wonderful feeling to do what god wants you to do anyway so it's important that actually we make the right the right sound um through this process and in one corinthians um 14 verse 8 it talks about a distinction of, of of notes musical notes it says if the trumpet does not sound a clear call who will get ready for battle i'm going to say that again because some of you are meant to sound a clarion call a trumpet for as it were battle for you know a battle we battle against the enemy we don't battle you know against uh, flesh and blood in this context the fact that actually who will get ready for battle so who will be you know and if you don't make a clear call people aren't going to gather to you and actually there's a strong gathering call on various people tonight and actually you may not have realized that but actually people gather to you they trust you you've got the resonance and the sound of heaven around you you actually know god's word you deliver it you deliver it and it actually produces life where you go and people will gather to that so you need to think about what trumpet call you are making and actually, the sound of the previous season will not necessarily be the sound of the new season. And that's part of that baggage we were talking about. And the fact that actually, um, you know, it, there is plenty of noise in this world. But you need to make the sound of heaven. People are looking for the sound of heaven, friends. And so that will be an aspect of of dwelling in that love place of jesus letting god sing over you that zephaniah 317 with the love symphony of heaven that will mean understanding in ephesians 210 that you are god's workmanship which basically in that context is poema or poem and when you read a poem it has a rhythm to it, it has pauses so it's just not making a noise it's the rhythm of that noise it's the pauses in their noise there's no pause there's no symphony without a pause and then in 11, Matthew 11, 28 to 30, you've got those unforced rhythms of grace. So there already you've got a almost like many aspects of the sound that we're meant to make, but also the breaks in that sound and those pauses and the timing of the sound that God's going to speak to you about 
as you walk through and you change the atmosphere and actually you make the sound of heaven over the field or sphere of influence that God has given you in 2 Corinthians uh, 10 verse 13 that Paul talks about that field that that place of influence he gives you and as you walk over that place of influence you benedict um, and speak well over the land you make the sound of heaven over the land with your new sound which resonates with the groaning sound that the land in Romans 8 um, 19 20 and other verses actually is waiting groaning for the mature sons and daughters of the living God to walk upon it because then it will yield its harvest so as we say yes to Jesus we say yes um, which is yielding we yield to Jesus to see the yield in the land that God gives us that's very very exciting that yield can mean uh, uh, many things to different people that across all aspects of community and business and land and salvation and healing etc government transformation all right so that was number four number five and I pinched this from Phil Sanderson when um, uh, when we were actually on the Council of Prophets, so I shall give him credit yet again. All right, good to give credit where it's due. And scripture talks a lot about um, the door of our mouth. All right, so I'm just going to find um, uh, the scripture for that. So um, I actually used uh, Psalm 141, verse 3. All right, so it says, um, set a guard um, uh, over my mouth, O Lord, Keep watch of the door of my lips at the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, all right, which is obviously what, you know, but it's the set of God over my mouth. Keep watch of the door of my lips. All right. So, again, it's important, um, not just on our senses, what we what we say, but actually on the other senses that we have in terms of actually our, our gaze and our uh, what we're looking at and also what we're hearing from God. So again, it's important where our gaze is, and we'll talk about that in a minute in Psalm 84. Um, but actually, again, what we speak, the door of our lips, ask the Holy Spirit really to kind of get a hold on that um, because we don't want to be saying the wrong things, all right? The one thing I wanted to, to also um, uh, go back to is, you know, who will prevent, uh, what will prevent um, us going through the doors. Don't forget, we have uh, various keys, all right? So actually, Isaiah 22, 22 is the famous one, Revelations uh, 3, verse 7 and 8, talks about, the you know, the keys of David. What, you know and what uh, god opens no man can shut and what god shuts no man can open so don't wear yourself out if a door is shut god shut it all right don't go back and start tugging at it because you'll just wear yourself out because that scripture says what god shuts no one can open all right so let it go <laughs> right it may have been good but let it go and actually some of the things that we're going to come through in the, the, the previous season they won't be they'll be actually new relationships as well so people that you've journeyed with in the past season it's been great but actually you're not meant to journey with them in that same way in this new season as well so um there's that number six all right number six um so going back to the fact that jesus is the door all right so i've called this the door of hope all right so um there's a uh, you know we will experience trouble in life all right and we know people who actually are in trouble and and um and so within that um uh you know what what can transform that trouble it's a door of hope it's a door of hope so so again i'm not going to go too much into this just to time but read joshua 7 verses 10 to 26 ache and sin remember the story israel was winning lots of battles uh, told not to take any plunder Achan took some plunder put it under his tent and basically Israel started losing battles all right and basically the answer was you've actually got some plunder on, in your tent right Israel and so they cast lots found out it was Achan and then they in the valley of Achor um, basically um, he and his whole family were stoned all right so the valley of Achor became synonymous in Israel history with the word trouble because it said you have brought trouble on us today so whenever whenever israel heard the word achor it meant trouble all right so um some of us may be experiencing trouble you know today some friends might be experiencing trouble now actually that trouble can be as it were transformed with jesus into a door of hope because we know in hosea chapter 2 verse 4 14 and 15 God says, I'm going to allure her into the wilderness, speak tenderly to her. I will give her back her vineyards and make the valley of Achor a door of hope. 
So just because we're experiencing trouble, we're in trouble. It is not a, a place of actually, you know, all hope is gone. I've just give up because actually, you know, Jesus can turn things on its head and make that trouble a door of hope. And so, um, you know, that is amazing news today. And, and actually, how do we know this door of hope? It's the intimacy with Jesus. Remember, we started off the fact that actually as we spend time uh, letting the love songs of Jesus resonate over us, we know the voice of Jesus. We follow the right way. We go to the right door and we see the troubles transformed into a door of hope because actually we're going to the right door, which is Jesus. All right. We're not going to anywhere else. And then finally, number seven, all right, um, I've just put um, go, go through the door, just do it, go, <laughs> be sent, don't stay where you are. Oh, but it's comfortable here, Mark. Well, I think I use this phrase on the, there's a guy called Paul Fennick, who's an amazing pastor in Newcastle, and his phrase is, and I use it myself, comfort is a prison that you do not know you're in. All right. Comfort is a prison that you do not know you are in. In other words, I'm not talking about the comfort of God and everything, because that's the comfort that we should be experiencing. Right. That's not the comfort I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that actually God wants us to move. But because we've become so used to the the, the comforts of the previous season, we've put up curtains, we've made it nice. We say, to, oh, I don't want to move from this because I'm really comfortable. But God was say, is saying, actually, Mark, there's this amazing vista in front of you. And you're not going to move just before, because you feel comfortable in this place. All right. So so it's about going. And it's about hearing that voice of Jesus. All right. That, so so actually, as we listen to the voice of Jesus, that intimacy, we will follow that voice. Yes, we will go. So we're in the year, Jewish year, 5784. Guess what Psalm 84 says? Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Where's our gaze going to be? It's the, it's, the, it's the courts of God. And it says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. So what should we be doing? Where should be our focus? That, that, that tabernacle, the temple, Jesus, you know, that intimacy, Psalm 84. Interestingly, because we're in the year 57, 84, um, Anna in the Bible, in Luke 2, verse 36 to 38, Remember, actually, she encountered Jesus um, and and we're told that she never left the temple, but worship day and night, fasting and praying. Well, that's intimacy, isn't it? Guess how old she was in that in that, that point in the story? 84 years old. That's right. <laughs> Bit of a clue there. And finally, and Dave, Dave, Dave Bruce, Dave Adelaide, Dave will love this. Right. Two more points. Then we're done. Because he's a chemist and I'm a biochemist, all right? Okay, we're scientists. Guess what the 84th element in the periodic table is, all right? Because we're in the year 5784. It's something called polonium, all right? Dave would have known that off the top of his head, but I had to look it up, all right? So, and it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff. Polonium's a lot of stuff, but essentially it's very, it's not stable. It's a rare element and it gives off a lot of heat. Uh, the sort of thing you need actually on a cold winter's night, really, but, that, but because it gives off a lot of radioactivity, you don't need it, all right? But it's used as detonators as well. So and, and rockets and things like that. So basically, sometimes we just need a rocket, <laughs> to, don't we, to kick us out of the place that we're in, you know, um, uh, a detonator, as it were, to say, Mark, you know, come on, come on. We need a spot to get out of where you are to where you need to get to. And the and I'm going to end with this in the go bit. All right. Because we're meant to go with the the, the amazing love story of Jesus and um you know uh, god sending jesus for us and that that you know just the amazing divine love story to situations and people that do not know that story and um the 84th verse of the new testament is as follows it's matthew 4 verse 20 where it says come follow me jesus said and i will make you fishers of men at once they left their nets and followed him friends what is jesus asking us today tonight drop your nets drop the old way of doing stuff drop what you've been doing previously that is actually was good but is now beginning to wear you out come follow 
him, follow the lead of Jesus, who is the door of all doors, and we, he will make us fishers of men. As we go, we will know, and as we go, we will see, just like those uh, people that were blind at the Pool of Siloam, that as they went, they saw. So in closing, I just want to, I just want to, re, re, um, you know, and and uh, I mean, I've, you know, just doing this challenges me, you know, so if it's just for me, I'm, I'm receiving this. But number one, make sure it's a Jesus door. Number two, what will prevent you and who has the keys? Number three, don't curate the, pre the baggage of the previous season or other people's baggage. Number four, make the right sound as you go through the door and into the, the land. Resonate with um, the um, sound of heaven, the shofar of freedom, the tuning fork of heaven. Number five, the door of our mouth uh, and all, all that means. Number six, um, Jesus is the door of hope. He, he makes the Valley of Acor a door of hope. And it's the intimacy with him, which will, number seven, cause us to go. As we behold him, he will make us fishers of men and we will uh, see the harvest. So, um, yeah, I, I, I leave that with you. I was going to pull in uh, Laura Beth because um, uh, as, as we do, I mean, I know we're on 20 past, so we've probably got about five minutes left before we go into the rooms. But actually, armed with that, what's going to happen in the Zoom rooms is the fact that actually um, an opportunity to really um, to engage with this process of going through those doors. And you might have some testimonies. You might actually need a little nudge. You might actually, I don't want to focus too much on things that are preventing you from going through the door because there might be 20 and we don't want to hear all 20. We just say, actually, there's stuff preventing me. Help me to go through the door. All right. And actually, the, so so test me is going through the doors, what's challenged you. Um, and actually, and if you've done all of that in 10 minutes, then you can actually um, see amazing healings and deliverances in your rooms and the Zoom host will will <laughs> will facilitate that. So Laura Beth, um, you're so good at bringing word sharp words and being a springboard and summarizing stuff. So um, do you have anything to, to, to share? Yeah, just, just this place of just a real, I just feel a real somberness in the place of really receiving what Mark's given out there in this place of this is a real pivot point. I really felt tonight even coming on to um, the call with everyone. This is a pivot moment for so many on the call. This is a time when you know that you can sense that calling to go through a narrow door. And yet there is a fear and an unbelief there going, I'm not going to make it through that door. And this is a pivot night that God is really giving release in the place of why? Why can't you go through that? If you know it's a door that God's called for you and you know that he's calling you into that place, why wouldn't you be able to what Mark's talked about? What's preventing you from moving, uh, from walking through, from crossing over into that open door? And so God's given me a word that I've um, been stewarding and um, releasing both in Northern Ireland and Ireland and now in this in Oklahoma at the moment. But it is about old tethers. And um, when you look at the definition of a tether, a tether is a tie with a rope or chain as to restrict movement or range of movement. So the enemy's banking on that you're going to stay tethered to something old that God has called time on. It could have been very purposeful in another season, but God is calling time on some tethers. And by cutting those tethers, you're able to walk through that narrow door. And just as Mark instructed there, we're not looking to, you know, give a lot of focus to the tethers. This is an easy thing. It's so easy in being able to recognize tonight is an open door. Tonight is my invitation to an open door that as I'm willing to in my heart or within the group or just the admonishment that we're giving you now, cut those old tethers that is restricting your movement and not allowing you to walk through that, that, that door that you know is for this time. It's a real crossing over time and it's a time to go through the new door. And I just have this sense that there's so many that they're at that place of threshold looking at the new door 
saying, I have it in my heart to do that crossover. I want to be a part of harvest. So when we see the enemy doing all that he's doing in the earth right now, you can think, but well, where's God in this? God is the God of the harvest. And we are in the, the epoch of the greatest number of salvations that we would ever see on the earth. It's now. And God is calling all of us to walk through those open doors. So, um, in this place of understanding that the number four represents a door, a, a friend and a colleague of mine, not to reiterate what Mark said, but I just think I, I just want to give this as a, um, just a piece to go and jump off in. Um, excuse my, you know what I love about Saul? We get to make mistakes and nobody, nobody keeps tally. So excuse my Hebrew here, but Yod Daleth Hey, Yada meaning praise. Yod is a raised hand to heaven. Daleth is the doorway and Hey is the felt presence of God. And so in this place of there is sacrifice that Jesus is calling for us in this time, cut those old tethers, the thing that you've held on to in the place of sacrifice, he is allowing us to easily go through narrow doors. So um, God, as Mark was ministering there, he just took me into Hebrew, uh, the Holy Spirit, um, by what Mark was giving out, took me into Hebrews 13, 15, 16. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and share with others for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. In this place of what you believe is a sacrifice, that you're cutting those old tethers, you're going to be more streamlined in being able to go through the doors that God is calling. And I'll just end with this. This is the word that God gave me. It is your willingness to cut old tethers of the past, which release my meaning God's life and breath to the dreams that you doubt can live again. Today, break partnership with doubt. Doubt has landed on you, blinding to the blinding you to the reality of my sovereignty operating. God wants to sovereignly move in your breakout rooms. He wants to sovereignly move on this call that you break uh, uh, that that place of unbelief that you have over promises and this time to go through those open doors. It says, cut old tethers of unbelief and fear will lose its hold. Walk from the old ways I'm awakening you to even now. I believe when you go into the, your breakout rooms, there's going to be either business transactions that you've entered into, old relationship movements that God is calling time on, he's going to say, now is the time to break with those and go through the new thing that God is releasing on the earth. He says, run to me, sons and daughters of mine, all of you, there's this real act that God is saying, come low before me, run to me in this place of the sacrifice of his praise. And we're going as the sons of God on the earth in this time, we're going to be going through narrow doors that never looked possible for you and I before. It is such an exciting time for your life. Tonight is a pivot night to cut old tethers and to go through the open doors that God is showing you in your heart. Amen. Thanks, Laura Beth. That's so good. That's so good. And you're absolutely right. Uh, and 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 um, it is a pivot night. It is a pivot night. And 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 I love Saul because you say you can we can make um, mistakes in public and it's fine because actually it's not about getting everything right um, for delivery. It's actually giving the heart of what God wants so we can walk in freedom breakthrough. And I love it that I, I you know, I can lose a whole page of notes that were where that were there. 10 seconds before and and they're not there so and and actually who cares <laughs> you know um uh, if you want him to look amazing and um and it's all about you then you would but it, it's it's if it's about how amazing is jesus then actually you don't care and i just you're right it's that pivot moment um so um and we're not here by accident this is a perfect time of the year for us to walk into this because there's a grace there's always a grace for you know for open doors but particularly in this season there's an uber grace as as laura beth was saying and the fact that actually it is heightened for this season and so um we should just it's almost like an arrow saying um you know uh, walk this way do this and and god is making it very easy for us 
and the only person that would stop us from doing it is ourselves. All right. There's no, you know, we, we make the decision. We take the step. We say yes to Jesus. As Laura Beth says, we allow Jesus to cut us free from those ties that would stop us and slow us down. And those could be ties of comfort as well that we've been talking about before, because it will make us feel different, but it'll be a very, very good different. So, um, so yeah. Mm. It's Claire McCourt here. We'll get Claire to praise into the rooms. How's that? Does that sound good, Laura Beth? It does. I'm getting the thumbs up. Claire McCourt, are you around? Claire McCourt praying us into anything is always a good call. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm right. telling you, <laughs> yeah. this is your invitation to pivot. Claire, help yeah, us pivot. Exactly. I might just give my life to Jesus all over again, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited for this night. Thanks, Mark. And thanks, Laura Beth, for what you shared. And thanks, everyone, for being on here, because you all from across the world, God wanted you to be on here tonight. Or if you're listening to this after the time, this is still your pivot time. So I just say thank you, God, mm. that this is your time and your hour and that we're all in your hands. And you're such a good, good father. And you will pivot us tonight. And Jesus, you are the door. So we gladly together walk through. Mm. Bless these breakout rooms. Thank you, God, for every person as you meet, as we meet together, that you may be glorified and that we will meet you in each other. Amen. 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 Thank you, Claire. Thanks, yes. Laura Beth. Thank you. And, and actually, Claire, do you want to? kind of finish this section and then we'll go into some feedback so um thank you claire looks like what is mark asking me to do but the, the conversation <laughs> is on whatsapp all right but but in doing so could you just kind of finish and pray for us and just is that all right because you're amazing at it yeah thanks mark um had a great time in the breakout rooms and i know everybody did and um yeah i just wanted to share and remind everyone um uh, there are so many uh, great books out there and resources, and like Mark said, to continue to think about what God has been saying to us um, through through the words and through this time and through our breakout room times, and that we have pivoted in him and his work is complete. Um, but I just wanted to remind you, um, uh, back in, it was 2020, right, Mark? You wrote the book, Go Dream. Yeah. And it's yeah. his, uh, Mark's second book for Speakers of Life. Um, the first book is called Speakers of Life, and it's a great book, too, on the basics um, of how to of, of, of prophecy. Really good for just growing and hearing from God for yourself and every day. Um, but in 2020, he wrote he was really strongly led to, re, uh, to write the book Go Dream. And in the middle of that book, the middle chapters, there's um, it's all good on dream and dream interpretation. And we should be going after dreams in this hour as always but in the middle of that book is it chapter six and seven mark i think six i will have a look but I think I, i'm sorry i don't have a book here but anyway the book is go dream and i, I just know. want to encourage you all uh, i know many of you have a copy of that but give it to your friends as well um or if you haven't got a copy of that yet um uh, get it and and i have been reading constantly since then um or, or many times since then chapters i think it's six and seven but it's the divine seven, seven, check, seven and eight Seven, eight, sorry, chapter seven, eight, the divine love story. Um, and as we thought about the pivot tonight and and just um, the Jesus is the door and, and, and the intimacy with Jesus, but it just takes you right in there. So I just wanted to remind you all of that tonight um, and also to check out the other resources and speakers of life, which is on the um, website, web page, which is Mark. Speaks of life org. There you are. Um, but yeah, just... Um, for those who we, we always have sort of a cutoff time here, some people in, in your part of the world may have to leave us right now, um, but we want to thank everybody for being on here and being part of the Speakers of Life family and being part of the, the, the kingdom family across the world. We're just so privileged to meet with you all um, once a month or whenever you can make it. Um, and yeah, just um, I, I just really feel like God is like, we have pivoted. Mm. This is a new time. And, and God has just strengthened us to know it's done and it's complete. And it's all about intimacy in him. So just bless you. 
um, yeah, he makes his face to shine upon you. And thanks everybody for being with us. So this is what the Lord says to his anointed. To open doors before him, so the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you treasures of darkness and riches stored in secret places so that you may know that I am the Lord. Oh, I am the one who goes before you. I am the one who upholds you by my mighty hand. Oh, so I have got you. I've got wide doors open for you. Oh, I've got your hands. Because I have anointed you. I have anointed you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and to proclaim freedom to the captives and recover the sight of the blind to set free all the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Oh, to all who love me and obey my commands. Listen to my first words and listen to my last words. Go for